He has written so many great books. Uh, in the Heart of the Sea, Mayflower, he's out with a new one. Uh, in the Hurricane's Eye, Nathaniel Philbrick, welcome back to Big, Five, uh, Big 550 KTRS. Oh, it's great to be back with you, McGraw. All right, so uh, in the Hurricane's Eye, this, uh, you've now taken on the genius of George Washington? Absolutely. You know, Washington was a genius, not a you're not a, a, a brilliant man in the way of a Hamilton, you know, who had that jittery, knew it all, and all that kind of thing. Washington, what Washington could do was he could drown out the static of life, figure out what was the most important thing to pursue, and pursue it with an indefatigable uh, energy and, and direction. And, and so this is all about how Washington won, us, won the war at the end, end of the revol uh, last year of the revolution by uh, um, insisting that the French help us with their navy all right so we've all heard of yorktown we remember it the name but we don't really know what happened at yorktown fill us in yeah well you know uh, the usual narrative is that uh... you know we we moved our army down from new york to, to uh... yorktown uh, and surrounded uh... Cornwallis and won this great victory. What's left out is that there was a naval battle just days before Washington and General French General Rochambeau arrived with their armies called the Battle of the Chesapeake. It was fought between French Admiral de Grasse and a, a fleet led by British General Thomas Graves. And it, what the British were trying to do was they brought this great big fleet of ships down from New York and they were trying to rescue Cornwallis from Yorktown, which is at the end of a point formed by the York and James Rivers. And if they had succeeded and sailed into the Chesapeake and, and rescued Cornwallis, there wouldn't have been the great victory, and we'd probably all be speaking with British accents today. But for basically the first and last time in, in world history, the French Navy prevailed. De Grasse defeated uh, Graves, forcing him to return to New York for repairs, Washington and Rochambeau arrive with their armies, and the surge, the siege of Yorktown becomes this virtual fait accompli because a naval battle most of us have never heard of. Hmm. Nathaniel Philbrick, the book is called In the Hurricane's Eye. How much did George Washington have to do with the naval part of this? You know, this is the side of Washington that you know, I really didn't appreciate going into this. You know, we think of him as permanently attached to his horse, but he grew up in the Tidewater on the Rappahannock River and then ultimately uh, the Potomac. Uh, what Mount Vernon is actually named for a British admiral, if you can believe it. He knew the water, and he knew that once the French joined the war on our behalf in 1778, if he could use the French Navy to neutralize the British Navy that had a stranglehold on the American coast, this would give him, this, uh, by achieving naval superiority, this would give him a chance to deliver the knockout blow that might win this war. And so it was Washington's naval genius, a side of him, you know, that just is not uh, commonly realized, is what made this victory possible. Hmm. How did you get interested in this? Well, you know, I am kind of a maritime guy, even though I grew up in the nautical center of the universe, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I, I, I used to race sunfish sailboats. Yes. And, uh, you know, they're the VW of, of little boats, but they're, they're actually pretty darn fast, and they, you know, they race them. And I'm a former sunfish North American champion. And uh, I've, I've always been interested in the sea, particularly when my wife and I and our two kids moved out to the island of Nantucket 32 years ago. Uh, Moby Dick was my favorite book, and I use that kind of a gateway into the history of Nantucket, which was the whaling capital of the world. And I wrote In the Heart of the Sea. That led to Mayflower. And, you know, even my book about uh, Custer's last stand at the Battle of Little Bighorn begins with a riverboat built in Pittsburgh, I'll have you know, uh, uh, on its way up the Missouri River to provide Custer with the arms and provisions he'd need. And so I've always felt that uh, Americans don't realize the role that water, whether it's the ocean, the rivers, or the lakes, plays in American history. It's just an absolutely essential part of it. And so, But I have to tell you, not even I realized how big a uh, a role the water would play in the American Revolution, because it ultimately came down to the fact that America, this string of coastal communities in the 1781, was beside the ocean, and whoever controlled that would control the course of the war. Even in the 1700s, water was still vital, right? I mean, today you, well, you can yeah, make that argument, but even back then. 
you know, in fact, even more so because you know we have roads. We can we have the railroads. You know, now uh, it's e- relatively easy to move things by land. Back then, the roads were horrible, uh, particularly in the South, where the red clay was just impossible to get through, particularly in the rains of winter. And so, the only way to transport people, provisions, equipment, and army was by water, uh, whether it was down a river or by ship down the the coast of America by water. So. This was the absolute critical thing. Whoever had control of the water, whether it was the Hudson River, whether it was the Chesapeake, uh, would prevail in that area of the country. Uh, Nathaniel Philbrick is our guest. His new book, In the Hurricane's Eye. It's interesting because when you moved to Nantucket, uh, only then did your writing career take over. And yeah. you, you moved to Nantucket, what, by accident? Absolutely. Well, it, w- it was my wife's job that brought us there. Uh, neither one of us had spent any time out there. Uh, we had lived outside Boston where my wife was an attorney, and the commute was driving her and it was driving me crazy. I was actually at home with the kids, uh, you know, a struggling writer at home with the kids. And we, uh, she saw a job offer for a lawyer on Nantucket, and we looked at the map. Nantucket's only 14 miles long. It may be 30 miles off the coast of uh, Cape Cod, but th- we figured the commute uh, would not be bad on Nantucket, and that's proven to be the case. Our kids were one and four, and it was a great place to raise them. And, you know, and it was the best move we ever made. Everyone said we were crazy, uh, particularly our parents, but it provided me with, as I said before, You know, this was the whaling capital of the world. I became fascinated with it, and uh, after 10 years of research, would write In the Heart of the Sea, and off I went. Yeah, that is such a great book. It's a tremendous movie, but you also went on to write Mayflower, Valiant Ambition, uh, all the others. Um, What about, and this one, In the Hurricane's Eye, uh, movie, already sold it to Ron Howard? Or no? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, Valiant Ambition has been optioned. Uh, we'll see. You know, uh, just about all my books have been optioned at one point or another. It's, it's, it's very rare when all the pieces fall into place and it actually becomes a movie. I mean, it was amazing working with Ron Howard on In the Heart of the Sea. Uh, you know, who knows with uh, uh, In the Hurricane's Eye. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I will say this. Anyone who told you you were crazy to move to Nantucket clearly had never been to Nantucket. Um, <laughs> That's true. It is one of the most beautiful places in the country. It is the land of the time forgot, right? I mean, it looks the same way it did in 1776. Yeah, when you take the ferry around Brant Point and you look at the town uh, with these uh, church spires uh, along, you're seeing basically the same outline the whalers would have seen in 1842. And, uh, you know, that's pretty special. You don't, you don't get that kind of time travel uh, most places in the country. Nathaniel Philbrick, you are always welcome here. The new book, In the Hurricane's Eye. Good luck with this one, and we'll talk to you down the road. Oh, great to talk to you again. You got it. 750 